Hello guys, my name is Dren, and today we are going to make the smelter so that we can make bronze and even the charcoal kiln so that we can make much quicker charcoal for this smelter. We are going to go into the dungeons. I'm going to show you exactly where to, you know, what kind of stuff to look out for in the black forest. That way you guys can explore it on your own. This is a brand new character and I was able to do this right off the get go. You know, um, I gave myself the uh, necessary equipment, which is the antler pick and the stag breaker, which is of this guy here, antler pickaxe, and the stag breaker. Which so for this, you will have to have beaten Ike Thier, so that uh, you can get those made and uh, implement that. In another tutorial, we'll talk about getting iron. But first things first, bronze. Right, so there is definitely. Some copper in this forest. I don't have it marked on this map where everything is. Now to go into this forest, you know, you do want to have some food in yourself already. The Black Forest! Here we go. This is the first time this character has been to the Black Forest, so it's a little bit uh, scary for him. But you know, you should be okay with my guidance. Uh, I want my fire arrows equipped, just in case I run into a troll. I do know there are trolls in here, because as I was building that other structure, I was in here with a different character, and yeah, there are definitely trolls here. So here we have some tin, and this is something that we need. So let's break the tin apart. And just grab that. We won't gather a whole lot right now. Just a little bit. Now, with this particular... Yeah, it's, it's not really that uh, easy to break. Let's see what Hugan has to say here. Hugan then says, We found raw ore. You can find it in a smelter before you can work it at the forge. We also need to build a forge, which requires some really. To build a smelter, you need certain cores. Search for them in dark places beneath the earth, which means burial mounds. So yeah, it's time we found one. Just another note on tin. Tin spawns at the water level. It's always going to be down here, near the water level. So copper is the other thing we are going to need for this particular tutorial, uh, but much more near the end. You can tell that it's copper by, well, it says copper, but if you're at a distance you can see these glints. It kind of looks like normal rock, but all sort of yellow glinty, kind of a coppery tone, in fact. Now these copper deposits actually go deeper down into the ground than you would kind of expect at first, just by digging them out, just kind of the shape of their, you know, just the blocks that they're made out of. Uh, and you can kind of reveal this by, you know, if you start breaking this over this way, you can see that it's actually under the ground. And some of these actually go quite deep, like three or more layers sometimes. So, this is actually could be a huge copper deposit. Um, but, and, you know, but I wouldn't really worry about it too much. There's a lot of copper, usually in a decent sized black forest. There's actually two models here. This one is the rock. And this is the copper, you see? So you can see the difference. Quick note on mining. If you are mining, you do want to keep an eye out for both trolls and grey dwarves, because they can hear you, and because mining is really loud, so you want to make sure that you pay a lot of attention. So now that we have some copper, we use the left mouse double click, and we can, I don't know, I put in CU, that means, you know, copper in the elemental form. So I just always do that, and that way I know where to find it. If I ever am, you know, running around looking for things, uh, you can also change the markers by changing these guys here. And uh, sometimes I do that, but usually I'm in a rush, so I don't. But you can always go back and change your little markers when you have some downtime, say like at nighttime, or when you're waiting for something to smelt. And uh, that's a good way to keep yourself a little more organized. And new material, copper ore. So we'll be coming back and mining a lot more of this at a later date. In the Black Forest, you're going to want to keep an eye out for Grey Dwarves. And there's a couple of variants. There's like the blue-eyed ones, which are just kind of the grunts. Then there's a red-eyed brute. The brute is really strong and does a lot of damage. There's also a shaman with, with green eyes. You can do a poison attack. And also does a healing for the local Grey Dwarves. And there's also skeletons. So just kind of around. They might be around a tower or a burial chamber or something like that, so you're going to have to keep an eye out for those guys as well. Also, the bow is really useful with fire arrows this early in the game to take out skeletons. They end up dealing like a lot of damage per shot, and also keep dealing damage while you are running and repositioning yourself. 
we can gain a little bit of stamina. There's a burial mound down there. There's a couple of different appearances to them. Um, so, yeah. Forward. Try to get out of the way, but didn't work. And then dodge backwards. Oh, we got him staggered. Good. Then we have this guy. Get him to swing back up. Run in. And you can probably get like an extra hit there. Oh, yeah, there we go. Because when they uh, they swing, they don't always step forward, so you can you can usually get a free couple of bits on them before they get that other attack in. Just a nice little tactic to use. Uh, here we have Hugan here. Delves and dungeons can be found across the tenth world. They are monuments of the past, and most often filled with the riches of civilizations long lost. Remember to bring a light source, and we did. All right, so these guys are filled with these skeletons. Now it's kind of a pain in the butt, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna go through and gather a bunch of cores. You also probably will want to leave a bunch of stuff outside. I mean, you're gonna get tons of these dwarf eyes, uh, so like, you're, you, or just drop them off on the inside of this place. But what we're gonna want to do is probably get rid of this, and this, because you can't build on the inside, so. Yeah, as long as you have some way of getting in there and it keeping it bright enough for yourself, it would be fine. Now these are pretty dark, and I will adjust, I hope, in post. Now I actually want the Stag Breaker out when I can, because it is a much better way to go about this. I think that might be a Sertling Core right in there, actually. And if so, yeah, it's down there. That's like the perfect example. This is what you're after. You want these certainly cores. They are basically the thing that gets you a bunch of new crafting abilities. Now let's see what happens when we pick this guy up. Smelter, sparkle, kiln. So that's what you really need. That's what you're going to need to get the, those things built. Now. If you actually look at the recipes, under crafting, you can see that this guy here requires 20 stone. That's not too hard to get. The Sertling Core is 5, because you have to do this procedure here. You have to like come into these burial mounds and find these cores. The same sort of thing with this charcoal kiln. Now, the charcoal kiln isn't necessary, but finding 5 cores is like kind of your goal. Once you have 5, you can make the smelter and then you can unlock bronze. Charcoal kiln just helps get charcoal. Otherwise, you can just get that from burning meat on the fire. There's a spawner in here. So this is the problem. This is why we bring the Stag Breaker. Let's fire an arrow in here for light. Get the Stag Breaker ready. And we're just going to run in here and do this. Now this gives the AoE attack that just knocks them all back. It gives you a chance to continue to move forward. That is why the Stag Breaker is the best early game way to just power through these various dungeons, right? And so just another certain core. And well, the only other thing you're going to encounter that's much different than this in here is a um, ghost. So, and ghosts are... they do a little bit more damage and they take a little less damage. You just have to, you know, be a little more safe. And the better armor you have, like the higher the level of troll skin you have, the better. And the better you get with these other weapons will make it so that you can, you know, hit them more and more and more. Alright guys, I will see you guys back at the base with more Sertling cores. Dungeons can have none. Uh, the most I ever got was a 13, but most are 6 or 7. Now, you can also get like a mining headlight thing from the trader. It costs, uh, I don't know, like a few hundred. So, to get that though, you're going to need to gather up the riches that are in this place. So, so this is the other interesting thing that you can find in these things, is that that's one of those marker stone things, and it'll tell you where to find the Elder. So I will cover the Elder in a whole other video, so if you want to keep an eye out for that, you probably want to hit the subscribe button. Remember also, if you are liking this video at any point in time, just, just hit that like button. It would help the channel out a lot. So I got 8 cores total from this dungeon. Alright guys, that's that. From here, you head back to your base. I'm going to grab some more copper along the way because I need six of it for the forge. Alright guys, we are back at the base and now it's time to build our smelter and kiln.
I have some stone that I collected from various things along the way. So you're going to want to find a nice spot for your smelter to call home. We are going to switch over to our hammer. Once you have the hammer selected by pressing 4, then you right click and you bring up crafting stuff uh, right here. And then you can find out where it is. And we actually need two more stone, which isn't a big deal. Yeah, if you don't know, you can press shift and left click and that will bring up this menu here and then you can just drag it down to or up to whatever number you want. I need two so I'm going to get two. Two in my hand and now two in my inventory for 20. All right now I've been thinking that I kind of want the, the smelter and stuff over here so let's do it. So here's the smelter. We're going to use our five cores. Now there are multiple ways to kind of set this whole thing up. And I think out of all the ways I've kind of seen you done, something maybe like this, like that. Hey there, Hugan. Well met. Deposit your raw ore into the furnace and it will melt away all the impurities, leaving you with a bar of refined metal to work at the forge. You will need coal to fuel the smelter. This can be produced by building a kiln and loading it with wood. All right, so let's do both methods. I'm going to build the kiln as well, so let me just get my other things. So if you have a fire going, you can always go cook item, and that will put an item on there, and then you know, you'll see it go, and then it'll hit stage two. Now I'm going to put on some uh, ale and some fish there. Let's put the fish on this closer one. Okay, so now that cooked up. You can see its texture has slightly changed, and same with this tail. You can see the green and the brown. There you go, so you just have to wait till the next phase. That pops that off, unfortunately. What I'm trying to do is put the fish on there to show you, but it's fine. These tail will do the same thing. thing. Everything will turn into kind of round black lump called coal. There it is. That's coal. And that's the just normally cooked. So you have a bit of time, you know, to grab them. But these are what fuel your smelter. And yeah, there it is. The fish also turned into coal. Because I have the copper on me, we can put that into there. You can only fit 10 in. Oddly enough, sometimes it goes higher than that. And to get it going, you add the coal here. Two coal usually makes but one bar. That's three total now, and we'll just sort of see when one comes out of there. Now, ore is also very heavy. So you're gonna have to constantly watch for this limit here. And so, yeah, we got a couple bunch of things. The sconces and a bunch of copper crafting things. Yeah, so it took two to one. Now then, let's put down a kiln. We're going to need 20 stone, so I'm going to go gather some things. Okay, here is the little kiln. And right there, that's the opening. So I am going to have to probably put it on something else. Now, I believe it has to go completely on dirt, which is why I can't put it here, because these planks are causing it problems. So what we can do is we can also just destroy it and then that should clear it up a little bit. Yeah, so there's a spot right there for it, right? How about there? Now that's not quite what I wanted for it. And maybe I might need to actually build a weird little indent for it. I'm just being a little bit particular here with what I want to do. Because I kind of want it so that I can wait right here. Uh, I found that a nice little trick that I enjoy anyway is, is to get your pickaxe out and just sort of break a chunk right out like there. This kind of creates a nice little depression for the little bits and bobs to fall into, right? Now you just load it up with wood, and that will become charcoal. It takes a few minutes, but it generally generates at 2 to 1. Uh, yeah. So then I can kind of stand here, and it'll gather me up that, and then I can put that in there. Then when that generates the little piece of metal, whatever it is you're making, you can grab that. You may have to slightly adjust where you're standing. Looks like this is kind of the spot right here. And I'll just smelt up six pieces and build a forge. 
Now the forage doesn't necessarily need to go near these ones at all, but you do want to put some space around the forge because there are a number of upgrades you're going to get. And these upgrades are necessary for you to build some of the later game things. A couple of other things is that, um, you know, it's kind of nice to just load them up with stuff. And if you go away, go adventuring now, you know, it'll just keep doing whatever it's doing as long as they're, you know, loaded up. So kind of what I would recommend is you load this guy up with, uh, you know, 25 wood. And then you go and harvest 25 more, right? And when you come back, you grab all 25. And you jam it into the smelter and it goes in here. Then you fill this guy up with all the metal you need. And then fill that one up with more wood to burn. And at that point, then it's, you're free to go adventure and do more things, right? Dig out a giant trench for boats or something, uh, anything. Go hunt some more trolls because you're going to need better armor. You know, when you come back, come in here and you're like, oh, great. You pick it all up. You do what you need to do. I think that has been my favorite way to deal with things standing on them will cause, you know, the smoke from them to hurt you. That is, you know, a problem there for you. Now then, let's place the forge down. All right, this base got attacked by trolls. So you kind of kind of keep that in mind for your base layout that if you're going to put something near the edge. It could get attacked by something uh, unless you have a proper build. This one will get built up more. It's just at the moment designed to keep away early game hordes. It's not that offended. So anyway, I think I'm going to go put it in this corner here for now and soon I will dig myself a trench. But it has a nice view, so I love it. We're going to go crafting and I realized that I need a little bit of coal and actually one more copper. So I'm going to go grab that once I'm over here and we're good. So yeah, whilst this thing doesn't look very big, once you start getting all the add-ons, like, you know, all the way up to, like, iron and stuff, you know, you'll have a bigger bellows beside it, and you'll have a bunch of other sort of things near it. It's, um, it starts to take up some space, so you want to give yourself a little bit of space to put, you know, add-ons around it, right? So we're just going to put that guy there for now, and then that's pretty much that. You still have to get to bronze, though. There's also two exposed. Now, above it, it is covered. So that's good, but what it's actually complaining about right now is that there's no walls, not enough walls around it, so I'm going to have to probably put some walls in here. Not exactly what my original plan was, I kind of wanted this so that I could shoot down at anything out there, but it's fine. I can just uh, rearrange things and I may move this whole station around somewhere else uh, as I get this base built up. You can see that it's in a pretty early state, so you know, that's just sort of how it is. I'm gonna put some walls in these corner bits and let's see if it's working yet. I mean, I don't think it'll work until I get those ones in, but you never know. Nope, it's already working, so there you go. Doesn't need to be totally enclosed. Anyway, we don't really have a lot of options to make yet because we, you know, don't have bronze. Yet. Once we pick up our first piece of bronze, it'll unlock a whole bunch of stuff, which will be great. Upgrading, we'll kind of be able to do that here too. I uh, will be doing a tutorial on workbenches and stuff, but we're going to just, just lightly get into that right now. So let me just melt some more things up. Remember, if you're doing some of the bronze, it is two copper to one tin. Okay, so there we go. Tin. That unlocks the, the bronze recipe. We have one, and uh, that's good enough. We have four to one, so that's fine. We'll just come over here, and then now this is where it has now unlocked bronze, right? And you can do five at a time, which is you just require ten copper and five tin. So two to one, once again. And you just craft, and this is going to give us a whole bunch of recipes. Look at that. So some of these are awesome. Some of them are okay. But the important ones probably that you're going to want are like the bronze axe. And there is a bronze pickaxe. I must not have something with this character yet that unlocks it. Like I said, I've just made this character right off the get-go. Just so that we could, uh, you know, see the recipes as we got them. Bronze pickaxe recipe comes from picking up core wood and having bronze. 
that will unlock that for you. But if you've never picked it up like this character, it was, you know, not going to show up. So let's go take a look at that in the forge. And there's the bronze pickaxe. Alright guys, so just keep looking around for different types of metals and different types of woods and objects that you can find around the world and you will start to unlock all the different types of things that can be produced in the forge. Alright guys, if you found this tutorial useful, hit that like button and share it with some friends, anybody you think who will need to learn this information. And if you are new to the channel and like what you see, hit the subscribe button. It certainly helps the channel grow and so that I can keep producing great content like this for you guys to learn about. Also ring the bell so that you guys get all those notifications. There are more tutorials coming up, so if you subscribe you will get to see those. So if you want to see how to make the stag breaker so that you can get through the dungeons easier, go check that out now. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye bye.